I welcome you this evening into a meeting that is, of course, giving expression to one of the most important duties of a believer as long as he's on this side of eternity. I believe that prayer is the highest ministry that we can do from earth. I am not making light of any of the other ministries, but I have a scriptural basis for the statement that I just made. I believe, so that I can put it on record, that prayer is one of the highest ministry that we can ever execute, carry out from this side of eternity. I'm saying this knowing fully well that there are all manner of very important ministries. I know that there are the fivefold ministries and they are very important. I know that there are all kinds of helps ministries and support ministries that are doing a lot for the kingdom of God. But in the light of the fact that when Jesus came into this world, he stood in the fivefold ministry plus because he occupied all of the offices, functioned effectively more than anyone will ever function. There will be no greater teacher than Jesus. There will be no greater pastor than Jesus. In fact, some of the things he said about all, some of these offices, it will scare you the standard that he maintained. There is no prophet that will ever be greater than Jesus. No apostle can ever come close. He's the evangelist of evangelists. There is no greater humanitarian than Jesus. If you talk about a philanthropist, he was. In fact, the Bible calls him one. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, where the scripture said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That word healing good actually in the Greek is philanthropy. He carried it out effectively. And on top of all of that, he was willing to give his own life. There is no savior like Jesus. No prophet laid down his life for his adherents. But Jesus did. Now I am trying to paint a picture of someone that truly excelled as far as serving humanity was concerned. As far as ministering on this side was concerned. But when he finished all of that, executed it to the maximum, the zenith, where nobody else will ever even think of getting to. And he stepped out of that ministry. He still stepped into the ministry of prayer. The Bible says he ever lived to make intercession. So even the eternal ministry of Christ is the ministry of prayer. In my opinion, if all the other earthly things were better, he would have continued with them. I believe the reason why he continued with the ministry of intercession is because prayer occupies a very high place in the economy of God. If you know the way God operates, you will know that God does nothing on earth except in answer to prayer. 
That's why even when he's desperate to help his people, he says, I sought for a man that will stand in the gap. He really wanted to help them, but there was nobody that will bring forth the incense of prayer to give him legitimacy of operation. All the programs of God for the earth, they depend on prayer. If God will save any life, it depends on prayer. If you see anybody got saved, somebody prayed them in. If God will redeem any nation, it will be an answer to prayer. If any purposes of God or counsels of God will find expression on the earth accurately, prayer must be at the back of it. I believe that prayer is not just the highest duty of the believers. It is the greatest privilege of the believer. So I have taken my eyes from the duty part and I have focused on the privilege. It is in prayer that we primarily co-labor with God. When you begin to pray, God becomes your colleague at work. What a higher responsibility, what a higher privilege can you find like that? That to say, I went to work today, but my, my second is God. The partner I worked with, my colleague on the decks was God. Because in prayer, we labor, we co-labor with him. It's like this. God wants to save a family. That's what he wants to do. But he cannot just do it. Because as far as the legalities and the technicalities of the earth is concerned, under the government of Adam, he cannot just go and do it. So when somebody stands in the gap and begins to labor in prayer for that family who has peradventure picked on the mind of God and saying what God wants to do, that's what intercessors do. And he begins to pray. What that man or woman is doing is that they are co-laboring with God. What higher privilege is that that your colleague is God? There's no greater duty of the disciple and no greater privilege of the saint than the privilege of prayer. Praise God. All of the things that God wants to do in your life right now, tomorrow, they are waiting for prayer to ascend. Whether it is your prayer or a prayer of a loved one on your behalf. But they are waiting. I have never seen any purpose of God that does not come to light the moment it gets sufficient prayer boost. And that is because under the leaves of Adam, God cannot just proceed with action on the earth. And prayer is what gives him legitimacy and the right to act. Even though God he is bound by his own words. He's not the kind of lawmaker that is a lawbreaker. And so he establishes earth founded upon sound principles. And one of the things that will not happen is that once there's no prayer, purposes suffer, including divine purpose, if it has to do with the earth. That's the reason why the moment Jesus came to the earth, he prayed the way he did. That's the reason why the people he discipled physically prayed the way they did. 
including the ones that he didn't physically disciple, the one that encountered him by a revelation, like Paul the apostle. The other day, Paul was talking about his prayer. In 1 Corinthians 14, he was speaking to the church in Corinth and talking about speaking in tongues. And he got to a point where he made a statement that I'm still studying till tomorrow. He said, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than ye all. That statement can be interpreted in many ways. That's why I'm still studying it. But one of the implications of that statement is that if all of you in this church put together, if we put your praying in tongues into a basin or a bucket or a container, and we put my prayer on the other side in tongues, he said, my own way more than all of you. Now that is tremendous amount of speaking in tongues from one man. From one man. Child of God, if there's only one more reason left, if you have done everything right to the best of your ability, and that statement does not connote perfection. Hello? It doesn't connote perfection. If you have done everything right to the best of your ability in your full consciousness, and something refused to deliver, Prayer is the next thing that must be attended. I have said before and I will continue to say that what prayer cannot do, more prayer will do. Somebody said, you say all we should just do is prayer? I haven't implied that. But all you can do minus prayer may not go too far. Should I say that again? Are you saying all we should do is to pray? I haven't said that, but I have said that all you can do minus prayer, particularly those of us that are using the system of God, if we are routing our life through the system of God, because there are other systems, hello? There are other systems. If you are routing your destiny through the systems of God, I am saying To you that all you can do minus prayer is not enough it will not get you there all you can do minus prayer is not enough you will discover it one day and some of these things we pray all the time that God will reveal it to his people because even me talking to you today until it was revealed to me, I couldn't speak with this certainty. Do I sound this evening like somebody who is guessing? I'm speaking with certainty. If it was not revealed to me, I may not be saying what I'm saying today. All you can do, minus prayer, will never be enough. It will never be enough. Praise God. Praise God. And so if you desire to take it further, then I present you a system. If this kingdom is the system you want to route your life through. If you have other systems that prefers and you work for you, fine. But some of us, we have no option, no alternative. We are sold out to this one. If God fails, we have failed. I don't have a backup plan. I checked all the other systems. I prefer the operation of this one. Hello? God is the only person that gives medication without side effect. It's only the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Every other blessing, you will pay for it. You will pay. It's just, it's just a little time. Hallelujah. Only God's medicine has no side effect. I beg you, saints of God, 
if there is one grace you should believe God for is the grace to pray. People of prayer are close to the heart of God because his programs depends on them. As powerful as he is. Hello? Hello? Oh, I wish somebody would pray like the disciples. Are you aware that these people took their time you see, I am laying foundation, so don't, don't, don't think I'm playing. Do I sound like I'm playing? Uh, remember that they observed Jesus closely. They knew when he was sleeping. In fact, one day, one of them went to wake him up from sleep. Hello? They saw his miracles. They actually, literally were there. He raised the dead. They saw it. They were the ones that gave him five loaves and two fishes. They were also the ones that picked up 12 baskets full in excess after more than 5,000 people have eaten. If anybody was a wonder to this man, it was Jesus. They heard him preach so eloquently and dazzled the philosophers, the teachers, the doctors of the law. In fact, he began to do that from 12 years old until the people who were teaching this thing for hundreds of years, who learned it from the people that wrote it, will now open their mouth and look at him and say, what wisdom? Where, from whence has this man this wisdom? They saw him in all the excellence of life, ministry, and destiny that he exhibited. Then after all said and done. The one request they made of Jesus, it surprised me when I saw it. Because if I was the one, there are many things I could have asked Jesus for. I could have asked Jesus for his kind of wisdom. Because when he proffers solution, it is solution indeed. Maybe I'll ask him for his ability not to be stranded in any situation. Because as the problem is coming, his solution is waiting. Including financial problems. Hello, fellow Nigerians. The other day they came for him and said, we must pay tax. You must pay tax. You and your people have been doing like you are, you are men of God. You must pay tax. Peter was panicking. He said, don't worry, guy. You, you know how to fish, right? Go catch fish. The first one you catch, open the mouth. Money is there. If I were with them, I will ask for the gift of getting money from wherever it is when the need arises. I'm speaking for fellow Nigerians. There were many things to desire from Jesus. When they had the opportunity, when they came to him, their desire was, Lord, teach us to pray. None of them said, teach us how to heal the sick. Teach us how to raise the dead. Teach us, to, teach us how to multiply food. Don't they need all those things? Because after three, after working with him for a while, they found out that behind all these things is his prayer life. If we catch the prayer, we will catch the others. So no need giving him long prayer list. Because their prayer list would have been longer. Lord, teach me how to raise the dead. Teach me how to preach like you. Teach me how to feed people when they are hungry and there's no food. Teach me how to and there are many things. The only thing they requested, teach us to pray. We know you. We know how you are doing this thing. Then I realize that there's very many, there is still much things that the saints of today need to know about this mystery. The other day in Acts chapter 6, the Bible says when the, the, the number of the disciples multiplied, which is usual, as divers personalities and all of that come together, there will be clashes of all kinds. When the number of the disciples multiplied, there arose murmurings. Church politics started between the Greek and the, the, the Hebrews. And then all of that was going on when the rancor started. The disciples made a statement. Choose ye among you men that we can put over these matters. 
Because we, it is not wise for us to leave this business to serve tables. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. You now know why the only thing they asked Jesus to teach them was prayer. Not how to raise the dead. Not even how to win souls. It's teach us to pray. That's what we want to carry from you. We want your kind of prayer life. Because behind all these your things that you are using to do us, guy, is your prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that before this prayer quake will end, new fire will come on your prayer altar. I noticed that there's only 10,000 people that said amen. I said I noticed that only 21,000 people said amen. Yeah. I said I pray that before this edition of prayer quake is over, a new fire will come on your prayer altar. Yeah. So that you will not just get a deliverance, a healing, a breakthrough, but you will get sustenance. <laughs> Hallelujah. What prayer cannot do, more prayer will do. Mm. God taught me that it doesn't have to be guesswork again. It doesn't have to be trial and error. You can be accurate. <laughs> you can be accurate. Your delivery can be accurate. Your result can be accurate. You can be precise. You can be on time. Are you saying everything depends on prayer? Even the ones that don't depend on prayer, it is prayer that is making them to stand. Somebody say, where well, prayer is not the key, then prayer is the hand that is holding the key. <laughs> Hallelujah. But under Corsia, I am praying that a fire will jump out of my heart. And catch your heart. Catch your heart. And catch your heart. You are you not surprised what will make a fine man like me? You, you don't agree, so let me pose so that you will know. What will make a fine man like me to make a business of prayer? well read in the books I made a business of prayer if you didn't understand why the apostles made a business of prayer so I now bring myself just to help hallelujah <laughs> when I found prayer I found almost everything I was looking for tell your neighbor pray I'm talking this because the, the, this is a meeting that is around prayer. It's called prayer quake. In Acts chapter 4, there was a prayer quake. I hope you remember that. There was a prayer quake. They prayed until the place the Bible said was shaken. That's a prayer quake. That's a prayer quake. Praise God.